talk about people, who they know, what's their name, who do they work for, what's their phone number, the type of stuff that you find at the beginning of any sort of academic article. And then recently, FOF has been a sort of, you know, there's, there's a lot of stuff, uh, particularly I think relevant to Harnard's talk about how more and more academic discourse is through, through commentary and blogs and wikis and this sort of thing, and shock, which Alexander, I believe, will talk about during the main conference later today, stands for semantically interlinked online communities. So you know, just Google these terms if you're interested. Semantically interlinked online communities, shock, or friend of a friend, folk. And these allow you to say, well, you know, I'm a person, but I also have an account with Google, I have accounts on this blog system, I have accounts with this, you know, last FM, I have accounts on Facebook. And sort of take your online identity, which might be for interdisciplinary researchers dispersed throughout lots of different journals, lots of different communities, and link them back together. And you can already look some neat applications that are coming out using this sort of technology. So you can look at Google's Social Graph API, which mixes up friend and friend and this uh, microformat stuff to allow you to discover, so just Google, you know, Social Graph API, and you can, you can use this to sort of help track down your friends on the web in an open, distributed manner. But we don't have these type of applications. We're just beginning to have them for open access data. And, you know, again, when you talk about open access data, even just talk about a small bit of open access data. Don't talk about the scientific data. Just talk about just the bibliographic data. You have too much going on, right? So you have lots and lots of different disciplines. In computer science, we have DPLP, physics, physics, archivics. Um, there's, you know, there's various meta systems like Site You Like and Bibsonomy, which basically all do the same thing of sort of gathering all of this bibliographic information. So what's needed is some sort of common way to talk about bibliographies across systems. Some people are working on something called biblioontology, which might help out. I, I'm not sure. I haven't looked at it too closely, to be honest. Um, I guess, so I guess, you know, as a community from a technical standpoint, once we understand who the stakeholders are, if it's an advantage or disadvantage, and most of us here I think agree it's some sort of an advantage, even if it's hard to get to, um, how can we provide some sort of form to harmonize these existing technical solutions so that large open access deployers can actually link to each other? And can we get the major online open access repositories and software, uh, you know, software software specs like this work out Southampton and DSpace to, to commit to using this sort of common set of ways of talking about their data. And I suspect that Berners Lee will talk about this more today. Um, and one group way to do this is through the organization uh, founded by Berners Lee for web standards called the World Wide Web Consortium. Um, it has an office in Greece. If you're interested, I believe the office has a uh, sort of display downstairs. And what, the, what we're working on now is founding something called a social web incubator group, which is going to look at some of these issues about how can we standardize talking about people over the web. And it's a very quick, year-long process, which allows the W3C, which is, again, Berners Lee's sort of standard body, standards, web standards body, which has produced things that have been quite successful in the past, like XML, and is currently working on the new version of HTML, to uh, you know, how can we kind of keep it one web, one unified web, of, uh, it includes social networking like Facebook and MySpace into this web, and there's no reason that same model couldn't be applied to bibliographic and open access data. Maybe there should be an open access incubator group which gets some of the big people, big people who are really interested in open access, maybe most of the people in this room, together meet, you know, via teleconferences for a year, look at the different top 10 systems out there and kind of see, well, what's the common core, the 80% that binds most of these solutions together, and then maybe we could use the W3C to help standardize this core. And this is really necessary because even on the web, it's possible there's problems with intellectual property. And so one of the reasons why you want to go after an open standards body as opposed to use any sort of naming system or API off the shelf is because it's a common, it's a very horrible business model. It's called patent trolling, where you get people to use your technology, and then, at least in America, it's easy to sue them. Because you can say, oh, you use my technology, you need to license it from me, please give me lots and lots of money. And for open access to really work, we need a different open access system to be able to trust each other and trust how they're talking about data and the developers need to make sure that if I'm going to make a neat application, 
I'm going to have to pay some fly-by-night company or some university lots of money to license this sort of data. And so what's nice about standards bodies is they have lawyers who will help you go over these patent issues and make sure that anything that comes out of standards body is uh, royalty free. So everyone can come to the table who's interested in the open access movement honestly and openly and develop this sort of core set of technical solutions which could again be very just as just as you know just as it was very critical for the web that Berners Lee released the web and didn't ask for anyone to pay him for it. That's kind of why it took off to some extent. You, the same phenomenon could happen with the open access movement. So I would, if you're interested in open access, look at the W3C and the incubated root process, which is a very easy, lightweight process to get off the ground. So that's all. So any questions for, uh, for Harry in this area? Having, having, I've got a question for you, Harry. <laughs> having, um, you know, with your experience of, of these kinds of things, are there candidate areas that you suggest that we should be standardising on? Uh, you know, so, uh, you know, sort of for repositories, bibliography stuff. We just had a meeting in Amsterdam where we've been talking about trying to pull together to do something about you know, sharing citations and creating a large body of, bib uh, you know, sort of bibliographic reference material. What's, what's, what do you think the role of the W3C should be in that? Well, it's, it's pretty simple. So what you can do is you can, uh, you know, um, sorry. So, so when you have a web standard, it's sort of, it's kind of well, the reason they're useful is because no one owns them, except people, the web sort of owns them sort of in common. This is very important to develop trust and to sort of help its usage.